Upgrade into smart technology is not that difficult. However, a lot of people are not as knowledgeable when it comes to working with electricity and in some cases, electronics. This video, I'm going to talk about the installation that I did for a customer for a Ecobee 3 Lite. Let's go. All right, the customer uh, purchased a Ecobee 3 Lite. Uh, this was the original thermostat that the customer had. As you see, is a very archaic, uh, probably 1970s, 1980s thermostat. Uh, very rudimentary controls, no programmability, so you can't schedule it for certain times of day to change the temperature, anything of that nature. Um, this thermostat does do heating and cooling. The heating system on this is electric resistance heat. And of course the cooling is conventional air conditioner with a uh, compressor or condenser unit outside. All right, so um, this is the backside of that thermostat. And so as you see, there is a R, G, W, and Y wires. And those wires each represent a uh, a signal that is sent back to the uh, control unit. And so red is your positive uh, 24 volts. Uh, some systems use a variation or a range. Um, ideally your air conditioner system is, or conventionally your air conditioner system will use 24 volts. However, sometimes that 24 volts can uh, vary from like 26 to maybe 18. Um, so that's just a little backstory behind on that one. But uh, this one here, as you see, there's only uh, four wires here. And to install the smart thermostats uh, in a way that they don't use batteries, you need at least uh, five wires, that additional wire being the C wire. Uh, what is very common in uh, when the smart thermostat started coming out was that you take the G wire and you move it over to the C terminal but then you lose the inability, you lose the ability to control the fan uh, from the thermostat. And so uh, while that works in some situations, you know, like it's no problem in some situations, uh, in this particular situation, it would have been a problem uh, because the new thermostat has the, uh, as I mentioned, it's the Ecobee. And so it has a circulate mode on it. That circulate mode allows the, the, the thermostat to turn on the fan periodically and to circulate the air throughout the house. Uh, I use the circulate mode on my particular thermostat uh, because I live in a multi-story house and this customer's home was also a multi-story home. Uh, so uh, she had the same problems that I have in my house is that the upper level is always hotter than the lower level and sometimes it's unbearably hotter than the lower level. So uh, that circulate mode helps that uh, that temperature difference between the two different floors. All right, so uh, I took a I took a picture of what the original wiring looked like, so that I have it as reference. Um, a lot of times, as you see here, the Y wire it Y is normally yellow, but as you see, this is a blue wire that's connected to the Y terminal. And I'm assuming that when this particular building was constructed, uh, at the time, they probably were not using yellow wires in the uh, thermostat wire setup. So um, uh, that's why it is the way it is. Uh, I could be wrong about that, but that's just my theory on that. All right, so going over to the next thing, this is inside of the air handler. Um, as you see here, you got a bunch of screw terminals up here, and then down here at the bottom, you have the labels that represent those screw terminals. Um, so the red and white wire here represent the air conditioning or air handler. So these two wires go to the air, uh, the uh, compressor that sits outside. And when a call for cooling is made from the thermostat, these two additional wires get that call so that it tells the compressor to kick on. The blue, white, green, and red wires here are the wires that come from the thermostat. And so uh, the red wire, in this case, the R, 
is representing the positive 24 volts, as I previously mentioned. Uh, the green wire controls the fan. The white wire controls the heat and the blue wire controls the cooling. The blue wire goes through Y and uh, this white wire, it, what it says here though, it actually said W2. Um, I looked on here and I didn't see a W1, but I may have overlooked it because I do see that there's a W3. As I mentioned, this uh, particular unit had electric heat. Uh, so uh, if you kind of see down here at the bottom a little bit, uh, this is that uh, 240 voltage that goes to the resistant heat or the electrical uh, resistant heat. Um, and basically the resistant heat, if you're not familiar with it, that is the uh, where you have like those metal coils that heat up when you run electricity to it, similar to an electric stove or an electric oven. It's the same concept, but in a HVAC unit. All right, and so uh, originally when I connected this, uh, I connected the, uh, what they call the PEK. Um, I forgot what the acronym is, but this uh, particular unit comes with the Ecobee thermostat. And it allows you to configure the four wires that are on your thermostat to work uh, properly without having to move that green wire from the G wire to the C wire. Um, this is, like I mentioned, this comes with the thermostat if you have the Ecobee. Uh, so basically you take those same four wires that come from the thermostat and you plug them into their respective terminals on um, the PEK. And then out from the PEK, there are five wires. And so uh, each of the wires has a label. You can kind of see that here. So there's your red, green, blue. Um, you can barely see it, but there's a yellow right there. And then there's another one um, somewhere behind here that represents, I believe it's, a, it's either gray or black uh, tag on the end of that wire. And so uh, those correspond to the more co current uh, wiring diagrams or setups for thermostats where you have a five wire setup. And so this control box here uh, will take a uh, take the setting or the uh, the the signal that's being sent from the thermostat and convert that to a five wire setup where it is done correctly. That way you're not having to run new thermostat wire um, to connect up the unit. Now, because of how this unit is set up, uh, this would not fit in this space. Um, so what I ended up doing this uh, piece here, I ended up folding it back and allowing it to sit in this space here. And then also on this edge, I put uh, some electrical tape here to kind of make sure that the wires, if they move, they don't cut themselves on this edge and short out. Um, so, you know, that helps. Uh, originally I had it where this was resting on this edge here and that's why there, there's, that's why this electrical tape is here. Um, but instead of trying to remove it, I just left it there and then put more tape on the edge here. And so, uh, that covers that. And then also you have these two wires here. Um, I believe this is the connecting of the, uh, compressor to, um, the other components. Now, originally when I set this up, I did put two of the wires and I think you can see it here. Yeah, so I have the red and blue here plugged in. This is actually only designed for one wire per terminal. And so what was happening um, when the heat was being called to switch on, it was actually also switching on the air conditioner. And I think it was because of the fact that this was has two terminals in it and um, the way the thermostat is wired up, uh, it was probably sending a signal along that same line. And as a result, it caused the air conditioner to kick on. So what I ended up having to do was to rewire this so that only one wire from the thermostat would go in. And then this additional air conditioner wire went connected on the terminal block over here in the air handler instead of on the PEK. Um, so that to me was a lesson learned because um, uh, it, you are supposed to connect all your air conditioner wires together and so forth. So that way all of your AC components kick on at the same time. Uh, but this did not mention that, you know, that this was only supposed to take one wire at a time. I just had to figure it out through trial and error and testing the system uh, once it was fully wired up. All right. And so this is the final uh, installation of the Ecobee. Uh, the 
because of the previous thermostat, the wall plate or the, the, the paint behind the thermostat, there was no paint behind the thermostat. So um, you've probably seen it before where people take down one thermostat and put up another one. And because whoever painted the wall did not paint behind the thermostat, there's now this square or whatever shape it may be that is missing paint or in some cases wallpaper. Um, so this was that case. And so um, I asked and the customer suggested, yeah, go ahead and put the plate up there. That way you're not seeing that that those two different where it wasn't painted at. And so uh, very happy with the appearance of it with this way instead of the other way, um, because I believe the uh, there probably would have been a little bit, uh, maybe about half an inch to an inch of unpainted area under at the bottom of the thermostat, as well as a little bit, maybe a quarter of an inch to a half an inch on the sides of the thermostat uh, from swapping thermostats out if I had not used this plate that comes with the Ecobee. Um, I also, as I mentioned, I enabled the circulate mode. Um, I have this exact thermostat, so I was able to discuss with the customer how this thermostat works, um, some of the settings and my experiences with it. And um, she was very thankful for that knowledge being shared. Um, also helped her get the thermostat connected to Wi-Fi, and she was able to get the app um, set up on her phone and paired accordingly. And so as I was still finishing up the installation, she was adjusting the settings to her preferences. Um, so fairly quick, fairly easy. Um, and like I mentioned, the circulate mode was very helpful. I also shared with her about the, that she could get some additional sensors to pair to with the thermostat to be able to uh, have more even temperature throughout the home. And so uh, while she did not get those with this thermostat, she did say she would consider getting those in the future. So that is it for this Ecobee thermostat install. Again, this is the Ecobee 3 Lite thermostat. Uh, if you have any questions about this installation, feel free to drop a comment down below. I'll be glad to answer any questions. Um, ultimately, uh, I think I may have not mentioned this earlier, but this install took about maybe hour and a half to two hours to complete. Uh, part of that was discussing and also diagnosing because I initially when I wired it up, I did miswire it. And so I had, the thermostat said, hey, this doesn't look right. You might want to go back and check your wiring. So checking the wiring again, uh, I did get it correct. And the reason being is because the PEK, uh, normally you would have your Y and W to your heat and cooling, and then your G to your fan and your C as your common. But because you're using the PEK, you actually have a different wiring set up for the PEK. So you still have your red on your RC, but then your there's a PEK terminal on the thermostat as well as your W and I believe a C on the thermostat. And so because of that, um, different wiring with the PEK, uh, you have to wire things up and differently. And if it does, if it's not wired correctly, the thermostat would be like, yeah, this, this doesn't seem right. You might want to double check that. Um, so I did get that correct. Uh, but that wrap things up for this video. Again, any questions, comments about the Eagle B3 Lite, I'll be glad to answer those. Drop them down there in the comment section below. Also, please be sure to subscribe uh, each week. New videos, technology, and how DIY how-to. Um, until next time, peace out.